Section twenty seven, volume two of the Book of a Thousand Nights and a Night, translated by Richard Burton. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Filippo Joachim. The Book of a Thousand Nights and a Night, Volume Two, Section Twenty Seven. When it was the seventy-fifth night, she said, "It hath reached me, O auspicious King, that when Nusrat al-Zaman heard his words, she said." Allah reunite him with what he loveth. Then quoth she to the eunuch, Tell him to let me hear somewhat anent his separation from his countrymen and his country. The eunuch did so, and Zawa Makan sighed heavily and began repeating these couplets. Is not her love a pledge by all mankind confessed? The house that homes hinder be forever blessed. Her love all levels, men can wreck of naught beside, not or before or after can for men have zest. Tis though the veil is paved with musk and ambergris, that day when Hinda's footstep on its face is pressed. Hail to the beauty of our camp, the pride of folk, the dearling who enslave all hearts by her behest. Allah on time's delight. Send large dropped clouds that teem with genial rain, but bear no thunder in their breast. And also these. I vow to Allah, if at home I sight my sister Nusat al Zamani hides, I'll pass the days in joyance and delight, mid bashful minions, maidens soft and white, to sound of harps in various modes they smite, draining the bowl. While eyes rain lively light, neat half closed lids, a sipping lips red bright, by stream bank flowing through my garden sight. When he had finished his verse, Nuzat al Zaman lifted up a skirt of the litter curtain and looked at him. As soon as her eyes fell on his face, she knew him for certain and cried out, O oh, my brother! O Zaw al Makan. He also looked at her, and knew her, and cried out, O my sister, O Nusat al Zaman. Then she threw herself upon him, and he gathered her to his bosom, and the twain fell down in a fainting fit. When the eunuch saw this case, he wondered at them, and throwing over them somewhat to cover them, waited. Till they should recover. After a while, they came to themselves, and Nusat al Zaman rejoiced with exceeding joy. Oppression and depression left her, and gladness took the mastery of her, and she repeated these verses Time swear my life should fare in woeful waste, for sore nar time expiate thy sin in haste. Comes weal and comes a welcome friend to aid, to him who brings good news. Rise, gird thy waist. I spurned old world tales, of Eden bliss, till came my kausar on those lips. When Zaw al Makan heard this, he pressed his sister to his breast. Tears streamed from his eyes for excess of joy. And he repeated these couplets. Long I lamented that we fell apart, while tears repentant railed from thine eye. And swear, if time unite us twain once more, severance shall never sound from tongue of mine. Joy hath so overwhelmed me that excess of pleasure from mine eyes draws gouts of brine. Tears, O oh mine eyes, have now become your wont. Ye weep for pleasure, and ye weep for pine. They sat a while at the litter door, till she said to him, Come with me into the litter, and tell me all that hath befallen thee, and I will tell thee what happened to me. So they entered, and Zawa Makan said, Do thou begin thy tale. Accordingly, 
she told him all that had come to her since their separation at the Khan, and what had happened to her with the Badawi, how the merchant had bought her of him, and had taken her to her brother Sharkan, and had sold her to him, how he had freed her at the time of buying, how he had made a marriage contract with her, and had gone in to her, and how the king, their sire, had sent and asked for her from Sharkan. Then quoth she, Praise be Allah, who hath vouchsafed thee to me, and ordained that, even as we left our father together, so together shall we return to him. And she added, Of a truth my brother Sharkan gave me in marriage to this chamberlain, that he might carry me to my father. And this is what befell me from first to last. So now tell me how it hath fared with thee since I left thee. Thereupon he told her all that had happened to him from beginning to end, and how Allah vouchsafed to send the fireman to him, and how he had journeyed with him, and spent his money on him, and had served him night and day. She praised the stalker for this, and Zaw al Makan added, Of a truth, O my sister, this fireman hath dealt with me in such benevolent wise, as would not lover with lass, nor sire with son for that he fasted and gave it me to eat, and he walked whilst he made me ride, and I owe my life to him. Said she, Allah willing, we will requite him for all this according to our power. Then she called the eunuch, who came, and kissed Zaw al Makan's hand, and she said, Take thy reward for glad tidings. O face of good omen, it was thy hand reunited me with my brother. So the purse I gave thee and all in it are thine. But now go to thy master and bring him quickly to me. The castrato rejoiced and going into the chamber led him to his mistress. Accordingly, he came to his wife and finding Zaw Makan with her, asked who he was. So she told him all that had befallen them both, first to last, and added, Know, O Chamberlain, that thou hast married no slave girl, far from it. Thou hast taken to wife the daughter of King Omar bin al Nu'uman, for I am Nuzat al Zaman, and this is my brother, Zaw al Makan. When the Chamberlain heard this story, he knew it to be sooth and its manifest truth appeared to him as he was certified that he was become King Omar bin al Nu'uman's son-in-law. So he said to himself, "'Twill be my fate to be made viceroy of some province." Then he went up to Zaw al-Makan and gave him joy of his safety reunion with his sister, and bade his servants forthwith make him ready a tent and one of the best of his own horses to ride. Thereupon said Nusat al-Zaman, We are now near our country, and I would be left alone with my brother, that we may enjoy each other's company, and take our fill of it, ere we reach Baghdad, for we have been parted a long, long time. Be it as thou biddest, replied the chamberlain and going forth from them, sent them wax candles and various kinds of sweetmeats, together with three suits of the costliest for Zaw al Makan. Then he returned to the litter, and related the good he had done, and Nusat al-Zaman said to him, Bid the eunuch bring him the fireman, and gave him a horse to ride, and ration him with a tray of food morning and evening and let him be forbidden to leave us. The chamberlain called the castrato, and charged him to do accordingly. So he replied, I hear and I obey. And he took his pages with him, and went out in search of the stalker, till he found him, 
in the rear of the caravan, girding his ass and preparing for flight. The tears were running down his cheeks, out of fear for his life and grief for his separation from Zau al Makan. And he was saying to himself, Indeed, I warned him for the love of Allah, but he would not listen to me. Oh, would I knew what is become of him. Ere he had done speaking, the eunuch was standing by his head, whilst the pages surrounded him. The fireman turned, and seeing the eunuch and the pages gathered around him, became yellow with fear. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of day, and ceased to say her permitted say. When it was the seventy-sixth night, she said, it hath reached me, O auspicious king, that when the stalker girded his ass for flight, and bespake himself, saying, O oh, would I knew what is become of him. Ere he had done speaking, the castrato was standing by his head, and his side muscles quivered for fear, and he lifted up his voice and cried, Verily he knoweth not the value of the good offices I have done him. I believe he hath denounced me to the eunuch, hence these pages at about me, and he hath made me an accomplice in his crime. Then the effeminated one cried at him, saying, Who was it recited the verses? O liar! Why didst thou say, I never repeated these couplets, nor do I know who repeated them, when it was thy companion? But now I will not leave thee between this place and Baghdad, and what betideth thy comrade shall betide thee. Quoth the fireman, What I feared hath befallen me. And he repeated these couplets. T'was as I feared the coming ills discerning, but unto Allah we are all returning. Then the eunuch cried upon the pages, saying, Take him off the ass. So they carried him along with the caravan, surrounded by the pages, as the white contains the black of the eye. And the castrato said to them, If a hair of him be lost, you will be lost with it. And he bade them privily, Treat him with honor, and not humiliate him. But when the stalker saw himself beset by the pages, he despaired of his life, and turning to the eunuch, said to him, O chief, I am neither this youth's brother, nor am I akin to him, nor is he sib to me, but I was a fireman in the hammam, and found him cast out, in his sickness, on the dung heap. Then the caravan feared on, and the stalker wept, and imagined in himself a thousand things whilst the eunuch walked by his side, and told him nothing, but said to him, Thou disturbest our mistress by reciting verses, thou and this youth, but fear nothing for thyself, and kept laughing at him the while to himself. Whenever the caravan halted, they served him with food, and he and the castrato ate from one dish, then the eunuch bade his lads bring a goglet of sugared sherbet, and after drinking himself, gave it to the fireman, who drank. But all the while his tears never dried, out of fear for his life, and grief for his separation from Zaw al Makan, and for what had befallen them in their strangerhood. So they both travelled on with the caravan, whilst the chamberlain now rode by the door of his wife's litter, in attendance of Zawa Makan and his sister, and now gave an eye to the firemen. And Uzat al-Zaman and her brother occupied themselves with converse and mutual condolence. And they ceased not after this fashion till they came within three days' journey from Baghdad. Here they alighted at eventide, and rested till the morning morrowed. And as they awoke, and they were about to load the beasts, behold, there appeared afar off a great cloud of dust that darkened the firmament, 
till it became black as gloomy as night. Thereupon the chamberlain cried out to them, Stay, and your loading delay. Then, mounted with his mamelukes, rode forward in the direction of the dust cloud. When they drew near, suddenly appeared under it a numerous conquering host, like the full tide sea, with flags and standards, drums and kettle drums, horsemen and footmen. The chamberlain marveled at this, and when the troops saw him, there detached itself from amongst them a plump of five hundred cavaliers, who fell upon him and his suit, and surrounded them, five for one. Whereupon said he to them, What is the matter, and what are these troops, that ye do this with us? Asked they, Who art thou, and whence comest thou, and whither art thou bound? And he answered, I am the chamberlain of the emir of Damascus, King Sharkan, son of Omar bin al Nu'uman, lord of Baghdad, and of the land of Khorasan, and I bring tribute and presents from him to his father in Baghdad. When the horsemen heard these words, they let their head kerchiefs fall over their faces and wept, saying, In very sooth, King Omar is dead and he is that not but of poison. So fare ye forwards, no harm shall befall you till you join his grand wazir, Dandan. Now when the chamberlain heard this, he wept sore and exclaimed, O oh, for our disappointment in this our journey! Then he and all his suit wept till they had come up to the host and sought access to the wazir Dandan, who granted an interview and called a halt, and causing his pavilion to be pitched, sat down on a couch therein, and commanded to admit the chamberlain. Then he bade him be seated, and questioned him, and he replied that he was chamberlain to the emir of Damascus, and was bound to King Omar with presents and the tribute of Syria. The wazir, hearing the mention of King Omar's name, wept, and said, King Omar is dead by poison, and upon his dying the folk fell out amongst themselves as to who should succeed him, until they were like to slay one another on his account. But the notables and grandees and the four kazis interposed, and all the people agreed to refer the matter to the decision of the four judges, and that none should gainsay them. So it was agreed that we go to Damascus and fetch thence the king's son, Sharkan, and make him sultan over his father's realm. And amongst them were some who would have chosen the cadet, Zaw al Makan, for, quoth they, his name be light of the place, and he hath a sister, Nusat al Zaman, highs, the delight of the time. But they set out five years ago for Al Hijaz and none wotteth what is become of them. When the chamberlain heard this, he knew that his wife had told him the truth of her adventures, and he grieved with sore grief for the death of King Omar, albeit he joyed with exceeding joy, especially at the arrival of Zaw al Makan, for that he would now become Sultan of Baghdad in his father's stead. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of day, and ceased saying her permitted say. End of section twenty seven of the Book of a Thousand Nights and a Night, Volume two. Recording by Filippo Joachim.